first, I mean, Brandon, why don't you tell me what it was like to be at the White House today for this announcement? This was a big deal. Yeah, well, first of all, um, it's important to note how nervous I was to pick a suit color because I've never been to the White House before. So all of, all of the usual things run through your mind. But um, in truth, when I woke up this morning, I thought about the last five years. I thought about how hard it's been to, to go on the journey without my best friends. Um, I thought about all of the nights that I've you know woken up to nightmares, all of the times that I've thought about just leaving advocacy behind and I don't know, moving to Paris and never coming back. Um, and I thought about all of the work that so many have done for decades to try to get something over the finish line. Um, today felt like a vindication. Today felt like a lot of things, emotional, overwhelming, uh, anxious, but most of all, it felt like hope for the first time in a really long time. Especially that moment, I imagine, when the president says your name. Yeah, well, first of all, I had never, read his remarks before, so I didn't know that was going to happen. So I can tell you that, yeah, the president naming you um, from the podium in the Rose Garden is sort of a surreal moment. Um, and also unscripted, the president and the vice president invited a group of us inside to, to have a quick meeting in the Oval Office to talk about, you know, in a more intimate setting, what does this mean and, and what's next? And it's just really powerful to have leaders in the highest levels of government not just talking about change, not just you know preaching about what they're going to do to to for the media coverage, right? But but actually having real moments of dialogue with people who are directly impacted um, felt really nice. Gun legislation has been brought up so many times over the years. Like after every one of these unfortunate mass shootings, it's discussed, and then it seems like some steps maybe are taken, but nothing major. Do you feel like this time feels different? Well, that's always the million dollar question, right? Which is, is this time any different, right? We ask that after mass shootings. We ask that after we take baby steps on gun safety legislation. If I knew the answer, I'd probably be a very rich man on the betting markets. Um, but the truth is that it matters who's in the Oval Office. It matters who is helping to make policy at the high, highest levels in this country. And I'll tell you a moment we had inside the Oval that was powerful to me was there were family members, survivors, people in the movement who've been doing really important work for a long time. There were also US senators in the room. Um, you know, there were multiple senators, Senator Murphy, Senator Blumenthal, there were members of Congress from the House of Representatives in that room. Um, and the president was pretty frank with them. He looked them in the eyes and he said, the country is asking, what are you waiting for? And for me, that matters. That tone matters, that presence matters. It really matters who's sort of shepherding these things um, toward passage. And, and I think having Joe Biden in the presidency, having him do this in, in such a meaningful and impactful way was an invitation to Congress to join him on the journey, to join the rest of the American people on the journey um, to finally pass common sense gun safety legislation. The legislation itself, he mentioned a lot of different things that he wants to do. Um, what did you think about his proposals? Well, first of all, I think we have to acknowledge that the things that he proposed in terms of executive actions are the most significant action we've seen on gun safety in decades, right? So we've got to give him a ton of credit. Um, ghost guns, which are, you know, those guns essentially where people can buy a kit and put it together at home, doesn't have a serial number, you didn't have to take a background check. Um, ghost guns are a clear and imminent danger in our society today. And so his willingness to tackle that head on, um, the Attorney General's forceful statement about how they're going to treat ghost guns the same as other firearms, those are really big deals. The billion dollar investment in community violence prevention programs, that's a really big deal. A billion dollars is not a small number, especially when you're talking about it going to community led organizations that have never seen that kind of cash infusion before. So I think these things are huge. I think they're going to make an incredible difference. But again, I think that the thing that wasn't maybe spoken out loud, but maybe the most important part of today's um, Rose Garden moment was the invitation to Congress to be as bold as the president, to be as bold as the administration. He was inviting members of Congress to let go of all of their trials and tribulations trying to get these things across the line before and to do whatever it takes to pass gun safety reform. 
I know that advocacy has become a huge part of your life now since Pulse. You're in DC. What else do you have on tap while you're up there? Um, well, you know, I've got a, a couple more media pieces. I'll be joining Joy Reid on MSNBC tonight, and we'll get to dive a little deeper. I've been sort of furiously texting her about, oh my gosh, I never expected to be standing in the Oval Office with the President and Vice President of the United States, but here I am. Um, so I'm really excited to continue to sort of debrief on what today was like, what it means to people who are directly impacted. And, you know, I made a promise to Joe Biden in the Oval Office in front of that desk where so many decisions are made. And I said, I will be right here when you sign legislation into law when it finally passes both chambers of Congress. And he said, I'll expect to see you then. So I'm looking forward to this being just the first of many trips to Washington, D.C. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, for squeezing us in amidst your Absolutely. DC craziness. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for reaching out. I'm, I'm honored to, to be here and, and happy to connect with folks back home.